You're listening to The Dave and James Show on Sin. Now, our next guest has been described as Australia's answer to the late Houdini. He's shot to fame in Australia's Got Talent, captivating a nation with his death defying stunts and magical illusions that had everybody talking. Making his grand entrance on The Dave and James Show, it's Cosentino. G'day, Cos. Hello. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for joining Cos-man. us, mate. The Cosman. <laughs> the Cosman, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Cos, look, you're about to embark on your first national tour. How's everything um, coming along? It's uh, it's a lot of preparation. You know, we're doing in a number of different states. It's uh, you know, and we it, it's a, a big show. We have to travel with a you know, eight and a half ton truck, and we've got to cart that across the country. And it's lots of equipment, lots of setup, lots of magical things. So it's um it's a big endeavour. Fair bit of heavy lifting there, I'm guessing, behind the scenes as well for everyone on board. <laughs> exactly, that's exactly right. What can we expect to see from the shows, Cos? Because like you said, there's a lot of preparations that go into it. Mm-hmm. Look, it's, uh, this show is showing a very different side to me than you would have seen on Australia's Got Talent. Yes, there's grand illusions, yes, there's some big stunts, but it also shows up-close, intimate uh, magic, what we call sleight of hand, mm. and it's projected onto this huge screen. So the audience really gets to... You know, scrutinise or analyse the magic uh, as it happens in my hands. And the show also is really based on audience participation. So we get, oh, I don't know, I think we get about 10 different people up on stage. So you can expect when you come to see the Cosentino show, you will be involved. It's not like, you know, watching TV, we actually get you to participate. Uh, you know, we make predictions and we predict numbers and people's names. And, and obviously the audience who is there gives us the information. So it's, it's all about getting involved. And are people willing, Cos? Are they willing to do it? Or are they, uh, is everyone a bit shy? Or? Do you know what's funny? Everybody's very willing. Like I say, I need some volunteers and hands just shoot up. And I think, you know, people uh, have seen my performances on TV and, and they've seen them on YouTube, so they know that I, I don't make fun of them or do anything silly like that. Yeah. I, know, I know what it's like to be in the audience. And, and, you know, you kind of, you start to squeeze down, you think, oh, no, please don't look at me, I don't want to go up on stage. But <laughs> what, what we're doing is literally, you know, reading people's minds or predicting things, and it's, um, you know, they're well aware that I'm not going to make fun of them. So, yes, volunteers are, are, are many. Okay. And you've also been filming a, a TV special that will air on Channel 7 to coincide with the tour, and we know you can't give too much away, but how's that all coming together? My gosh, this is... um. Four months of preparation for an hour TV special, and I, it really gives you an appreciation for when you watch a, you know, a two-hour movie, uh, which, which, by the way, I was ignorant to. I had no idea. I, I knew the work. You, know, you see the behind the scenes and how to make these movies. And, but you just, and, and I'm not comparing it to that in any way whatsoever, but it's just so much work. I mean, I wrote the script. We had to develop the stage show. You know, we had to de- de- develop all the wording. We had to develop all the illusions, the lighting, the yeah. costumes. And that's just for the, 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 the live aspect, let alone then going into the streets and, and performing magic in the streets and a huge world-first stunt that's never been done before. A lot of work. Then the editing, and it's, um, you know, and it's going to, you know, people are watching, they'll fly by very quickly, but it's, it is a lot of work and a lot of preparation to, uh, to get that whole hour, but very exciting and never, ever been done before by an Australian magician. Never. Never. Never, ever. No. First never, time. Ever. <laughs> this is amazing. Like, this, it's going to be a ripper special. Like, I, I can't wait for it. Uh, I've seen actually on your Facebook page and because, um, that you you had a little picture there and also on your website of you doing the voiceovers this week. Yes. How's that all coming along? Because it's not easy, the voiceovers. No, it's, uh, well, you guys would know, it's, it's very strange. I, um, yeah, I'm in this little booth and, and I'm, I'm doing my voiceovers and narrating certain aspects of the TV special and the director's like, more energy, more energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. And you know when you watch, so once again, you watch the behind the scenes of how they do Shrek or those movies and, and you see the actors being wild and they're throwing their arms and they're a bit, and you're kind of saying, calm down, man, no one can see you. <laughs> you actually have to get into that, that. You've got to act it out properly, otherwise it's very flat. So it was a new experience and, and much more difficult than I actually thought. Yeah, well, a little bit of acting comes with it, obviously, with being a, a magician. You know, you're like a presenter and it's you have to be able to perform, isn't it? It's exactly right. We say um, that magicians are, are actors playing the part of a magician, and that's really the truth. You're playing the part of someone who's got supernatural abilities and things like that. But in the end, it, yeah, it's, it's acting. Yeah, and now, because uh, the man sitting across from me here, Dave, also considered himself to be a magician at high school (laughs) and he had the ability to make pens disappear and often they would go missing from pencil cases and somehow find themselves stuck in the classroom ceiling. (laughs) 
<laughs> did you get up to any uh, magical mischief in uh, your youth? I, I, I did. I, I, I would do uh, things like that. People's, uh, things would disappear from people's pencil cases as well. I, I'm a victim. Well, not a victim, but I, I would actually do that. <laughs> and, I, you know, you learn these little tricks. That's how you develop these, um, you know, bits of material. I do a piece in my show, actually, where I transform a, a $5 note into basically a 10. That developed as a kid, like being at high school and taking people's money and you know, doing scams and things <laughs> <laughs> You gave it back though, sure. <laughs> sometimes and sometimes I didn't. <laughs> but I mean, Dave, it's not a bad trick, is it? It's slightly creative. I mean, you, you had the right idea. You wanted to make him disappear. I did, I did. It's just I should have kept him because I started the year with no pens and then by the end of it I had 50 pens. So <laughs> should have kept him made a sale for it for next year. <laughs> now, cause look, we caught up um, last Saturday uh, as part of Channel 7's coverage with the pre-match show. Yep. Um, and for anyone that was watching uh, Channel 7, I know, James, you were watching a little bit. Cos um, performed a card trick and the footballs. Mm. Um, how, how much preparation goes into a trick like that, Cos? Because um, I know you, you made that especially for um, the pre-match show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of work. The thing about magic is you spend hours practicing months developing so that the audience actually never really sees anything that you do and it's um you know there, there was a, you know a month of preparation just to you know work out the idea and then work out how it's going to happen and and it's um there's a lot of work um that goes into just uh, something as simple as making a card disappear and end up inside a football mm. so it's um you know, every time you see me do a routine it, it's like uh, how, how a sing it's like a singer putting a song together um, laying the track down and singing it and then getting the band to play. So it's pretty much the same thing for three minutes. So it's a lot, it's a lot of work. I mean, we did, uh, I did a couple of underwater stunts, the stunts I did on AGT, and that's months of preparation for, you know, two minutes of success. Yeah, and, I mean, what is that feeling like, I guess, when you're doing those big high stunts? I mean, do you ever have a feeling, or have you ever had a feeling, where you've said, I might not make it out of this? You know, the... Um, the last, the one I can't talk too much about, the one I, um, I've done, just recently done for the actual TV special, was a, a little bit ridiculous. It was done in a very short time frame, uh, which was very, very silly. And it, it was, it combines two of Houdini's, well, actually, I can't say too much, but it combines, it, it's very, it was a very death-defying stunt, done very, very quickly. Obviously, because of, uh, I've done a similar, not similar, but obviously because I've trained and done things before, because I was quite used to the preparation, so I had to, you know, fast track it, but it, um, you're right. I got to a point where I thought, you know, seriously, I'm really this is really pushing my limits now, my threshold. And my gosh, is it going to be worth it? I hope mm. so. And um, obviously, you know, I, I survived. But there's a point in it where you actually, when you watch the, the TV special, you'll see that I'm, I'm. There's no, there's no faking. You can see my general concern yeah. and, and my and my family's concern for my own well-being. And these things. As, no matter what skeptics say, you know, oh, you know, is he really reusing locks? Or blah, blah, blah. You know, the truth is, I, you know, if I'm doing an underwater escape, I'm underwater and I'm holding my breath. And unless yeah. you're a fish, then I don't know how you hold your breath. Because <laughs> <laughs> people always say to me, no, you're breathing somehow underwater. You're thrashing about this. You're breathing somehow. Well, look, you know what? If you can do that, please let me know. <laughs> make my job a hell of a lot easier. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, I mean, one of my favorite films, uh, and I'm not sure if you've seen it, because it's uh, The Prestige. Have you? I have seen it, yes. and I am a big, big fan. Big fan. And I mean, what I'd say to that is, whilst I'm sure there's a fair bit of trick photography in it, mm -hmm. it raised an interesting question to me about the difference between a great showman and a great magician. That was definitely the theme in, in that film. Yeah. Um, and I mean, in your opinion, which of the two is more important? Ah, very interesting. You know what? We have a saying that anyone can do a trick, which is true. Mm. But very few people can actually make magic. And I think that's the point. You know, you can go on YouTube and kids can do tricks and they film themselves or anyone can go out and do a card trick. But then there's a different point where, you, I hope when you come to my show, for example, yeah. or when you watch me on TV, that I do, trans, you know, I, I do take you to another place. You, 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 there's a believability to it, you know. Can he actually, I don't know, saw someone in half or can he actually disappear and end up in the audience? It's that believability, number one. Number two... It's the showmanship, in my opinion. That's what's really mm. worthy of success. Because once again, if it's just a trick, the audience becomes bored very, very quickly. Yeah. 
and they kind of they just oh it becomes a bit of a puzzle to them so is it the presentation i, I of think the so it's the I, presentation I, I, look different magicians will say different things my opinion is it's all about the entertainment. You need to entertain people. Yes, the trick needs to be baffling. Yes, it's got to be amazing. But at the end of the day, then it just becomes a trick or a puzzle. You need to wrap it in mystery or drama or suspense or maybe it's even got sex appeal, or no matter what, you know, and that's what makes it um, great, mm. the presentation. It makes really people want to... It is, isn't yeah. it? And you, it makes people actually want to go out and, and watch the show because it's not just magic, it's... You, like you said, um, Cos, it's the whole performance and everything Definitely. combined together. Definitely. And I, you know what, to me, it's like, it's like going to watch a movie and you can see a movie, a blockbuster with really good special effects and it's got a great storyline. It's got good special effects, great storyline, then you've got a great movie. Then you go watch a blockbuster, which is just a special effect after special effect. And yes, it's, you kind of go, oh, they're really good. But when you don't have good character development, when you don't have a good storyline, the movie always falls flat, no matter how good the special effects are. Mm, yeah, that's exactly. true. Like for a magic show, exactly, and it, it does. It comes back to that storyline. Yeah, it, definitely. And um, also too, because um, you were saying earlier on that um, you know, being Australia's grand illusionist um, on a world um, international scene, you know, you, you've recently won um the Merlin Award, mm -hmm. which is considered to be the Oscar for um for magicians. Yes. Um, how did it feel to be um to be honoured with that prestigious award? Yeah, you know what, it's um, it's pretty huge. Like, I was very excited when I found out about it because, you know, previous recipients are David Copperfield, who, you know, he's probably the greatest, the, the, the greatest illusionist, the modern illusionist after Houdini, let's be honest. Yes. Um, you know, he's, he's won the award, and you've got Chris Angel, who's won it. And then to just be considered and put into that category to because I've been contributed to the art form, he's ridiculous really and in Australia we don't quite get it or understand it if you go to America magic is big business if you go to Europe it's big if you go big business if you go to Asia it's ridiculously big you come to Australia mm, it's not so big we were changing that now slowly but surely so yeah from an international perspective it's a really big deal um, for, for me and 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 uh, you know, people say this, but the truth is, it's actually very humbling. When you get put into that kind of category, you kind of go, are you serious? I'm like, wow, am I really? Am I work? Yeah, wow. It's, it's a like bit, you get a bit taken back by it all. So it's, um, um, yeah, very, very honoured to, to, be, to, to be considered and to have won this award. Yeah, and given you're so passionate about your craft as well, I believe you're currently looking to pass on your skills and set up your own magic school, Cos. Exactly. That's exactly what we want to do. And that's because, once again, going back to what I just said, it's, um, you know, with what I do, there's no teachers, there's no schools, there's, there's no companies to help produce it. It's not like records or singing. It's all, everything you see me do is self-taught. Mm. Um, you know, and it's tough and it's really hard. And I've learned so many things that I could pass on to other people. And that's what we're trying to do. Unfortunately, I'm going to cut it really straight to you. Unfortunately... Yeah companies and people when there's no money in it they don't care so when you're putting something together like a school if there's no money for them to make in it it's very hard to get something like that up and running and that's sad mm, it is funding. yeah it's challenging yeah. so how are you going about that now cause so with the shows that you're doing at the moment is is some of the intake going towards um, the magic school yeah what we're actually doing now is we're, we've got a number of different people helping me work out how we can actually put this school make this whole school viable feasible you know so that you want to do. You don't want to just do something that's half-assed. You know, you really needs to be decent, and there needs to be good quality and good quality teachers and things like that. So there's a couple of magicians, more than a couple. There's magicians behind me who are now really starting to support this idea. So we're making inroads now. There's a couple of schools in in Africa, South Africa, where they have some really good um, formats for schools, and that's what we're trying to base it off now. So it's a slow process, but we'll eventually, hopefully, you know, we'll get there. And it's um, you know, what we're going to do now is also you know some teaching uh, DVDs and also books and start it through that process through my website so that we can start to generate that interest. It's a good idea, Dave. Yeah. We have to get a copy of those DVDs so <laughs> you and I can start doing a few tricks together. We have to. We have to. We're going to put our magic to the test, mate. <laughs> oh, it'd be better than your pen trick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> well, Cos, look, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you today. Th thanks for taking the time to chat to us. No 
worries. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great. No worries, Coles. No worries. And remember, Constantino will be performing at the Palms at Crown on Friday the 19th of October through to Sunday the 21st of October as part of his Distortions Tour. Tickets available through Ticket Tech. Thanks for joining us on the Dave and James Show, Constantino. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. 